Welcome, Lawrence, to For the Love of Group Fitness podcast. Namaste so, and thank you for having me. We are honored. Oh, both and biscuit and biscuit. I haven't got my cats. I don't know where they are causing trouble, probably. We're basically going to be chatting about all things group fitness. But uh, my initial question to you, Lawrence, is how did you end up in this industry? Thank you for asking. Through a family of heredity with a lot of issues, and there's so much we can't change when we inherit heart and blood and brain and thyroid and organ problems, I learned very young, losing a father at a very young age, that I was on the same path. We're not boring, we're not. And I think that because I got scared by the medical community, mm. I had to start making some changes for myself. And there was so much that pills could do, doctors had told me in the 80s, mm. and I learned to take a little bit of movement because my favorite idea of peace and joy and energy were a couple things like TV shows and quarts and gallons of ice cream. And that was not enough because I was over mm -hmm. fat and I was not healthy. And so when dad died, I remember the funeral was a really crazy thing for me. And I had to make some changes. And I, in electives in college, had to take these things called swimming. You had to pass a swimming test. And I thought, okay, I can doggy paddle. And you had to do something like fitness programs, but there was stress management, there was yoga meditation, right. there was Tai Chi. I thought this is all great because you don't sweat or change your clothes. And then there was this music stuff coming from the gymnasium next door. And I thought, well, that looks like fun and easy. And it was all these women screaming. And I thought, well, that looks crazy, but fun. And I went there and stood in the back and signed up for that. And then I remember the girl named Dawn. I remember the song she used as warm up. I think we always remember our first songs ever from the first experiences we take. <laughs> and I said to her, this is really fun. I think maybe one day I should do something like this. I started making changes to how I was eating in addition to the mm -hmm. meds. And people say, what are you doing? And I'd say, I'm not really sure. And they'd say, teach us, you look fabulous. Again, focusing on the outside. I mm. wish I could have had better answers than we did then. I'm feeling great. Let me share with you what I'm doing to feel great. Intrinsic goals, not just, oh, I look great. You could do this too. This is what I do mm. in the tuning band. And this is what I do in the class. And, nah. and I said, well, if I'm going to share this with others, I better know what I'm going to do. So I went to Washington, D.C. and researched without internet. There was no Google then. And took the mm. first ACE sitting group fitness exam. And for the <laughs> love of group fitness, I sat there and I took an exam and I got gold certified, which in American Council on Exercise means there was no manual because there was the first exam sit through. I wow. Passed. Wow. I went back to college and continued on my master's, which had nothing to do with fitness per se. I, I did two masters, Spanish translation, because I thought ka for living in America as the second mm -hmm. language. And then in education, how we learn and how we teach, always right. working simultaneously on fitness, keeping up credits. And after ACE group fit, I thought, well, maybe ACE personal training, because maybe I want to work one-on-one. -on -one. That's got to be easier than a crowd of screaming women. Just one? I can handle that. So give me a <laughs> certification on just working with one pair of eyes at a time. And uh, kept getting continuing education certified as our industry, as you know, keeps mm -hmm. evolving there became bar and there became shoes on and then shoes off. And then I worked for Reebok and then I worked for other companies and then started presenting and I want to be a provider and I don't just want to get CPR certified. I want to also be a one-stop shop. So I want to give people the credits and I want to give people the CPR. So I worked for the American Red Cross and I want to be able to have people come just to me to stay certified and get all their 20 credits every mm. year or every two years. So what 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 was the, the so there was a leap wasn't there from actually participating in classes to then actually going right I'm going to teach this and Not then at all right how many of us have found the people that work their way to the front row they want our job more than we do and count yeah. us and tell us when we didn't do four on the other side or what <laughs> changed or yeah. if we have a broken shoelace or a different glass of Starbucks cup, they notice everything. Yeah. And uh, it's not a very unique story. I started in the 
in the back. I, I stayed in the back the whole time, actually, the whole time. I absolutely stayed in the back the entire time. And then when I started teaching, I thought, okay, I'll have to do this from the front. I did not, I never made my way to the front row. They were too busy holding up all the space. <laughs> <laughs> you could have stayed in the back and just turned the class around, then you'd be in front. <laughs> Sometimes the teacher would do that. I think that's important. Yeah, all the things I had to learn about the business of fitness because the certification manuals never addressed three things. I think they never addressed customer service. They never address the business of fitness, how to become a business and what you really need versus the things mm. you should have like liability insurance. And number three, social media skills. Uh, when they became popular, we had to learn all those ourselves. And I'm still learning because I watch you. <laughs> and I just watch other people. <laughs> We're on the same, then, same same sea together in, in different boats. But then, then, then also, then there's the next step, isn't there, of people wanting to become a trainer or a presenter. You know, because obviously, yes, there's this natural progression possibly from being a participant to teaching. But it's a big, I think it's a big jump to kind of want to be a trainer. You know, was that something you consciously chose or did that, did it choose you? Yes, both. I think that I, I wanted to keep my eye on the business sense. I don't just want to teach my demographic at 8 a.m., 20 or however many people when I got my first regular experience. I thought, what else do these professionals need? Well, we need to stay certified. We need CPR. We need continuing education choreography ideas. So I found other professionals like I was who were a little bit hungrier for more. And I learned it was very daunting because no one said, here's the business plan if you want to make more money in Texas, where I was at the time, where I say mm -hmm. I was in the trenches and sowed my oats more than anything for group fitness. I did two morning sessions, two Wednesday at noons, two afternoon and evening sessions, always taught on weekends. There was a crazy load and drove myself sweaty and went to different clubs and paid my dues. And just because we changed our clothes doesn't mean mm. we took a shower. And, <laughs> and, and I did all those things. And I learned with other fitness professionals who were a little bit hungrier that sure, we might be fearful, but if you are fearful, you carry your fear alone. If you are hopeful, then you carry your fear with others. And mm. I think it was important to have a little team of other community-minded individuals. We called mm. ourselves the Fitness Group 2000 because we were going right. to change the century from 99 right. to 2000. And we became providers for the continuing education companies. Okay. Awesome. What was the, so what, what was the industry, group fitness industry like back then in America? Back then. Back we then. started, I think, like so many places in the world and went full spiral. I like to say spiral and not circle because a circle is you're chasing your tail, but a spiral, yeah. at least you're moving forward in cycles, which is all of life, like pandemics have cycles. I think that I we started barefoot. Then we went to Shad. Then we went back to barefoot for modalities that became popular like yoga, et cetera. Mm. Then we had chorus verse, chorus ber verse called jazzercise. Yeah. Then we went to individually choreographed. Then we were back to the world craze of Zumba and other similar things like pre-choreographed music, beat, phrase, choreography, get your music and moves in a box, Les Mills, if you will, where you mm -hmm. memorize. And, and then... And then we finally find sort of three approaches to fitness now or three strands, which always existed, just spirals of going forward. The companies come and go, but the mentalities are the same. You can do it yourself, pre-individually choreographed. You could do what other people tell you to do, pre-choreographed, or you could do it on the fly called freestyle. And that works for very few people in the industry. Have I ever seen be able to walk into a room, see the room, see the dynamics of the room, judge the energy, put together their a playlist. And the leader in the world is the incomparable New York City based Calvin Wiley of Calvinography. He's never prejudged what he would do in a session. And I learned that How amazing. does have a place, right? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> So do you feel the industry, um, I always think that the, the state of the industries here in the UK, you know, it kind of started off as, 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 you know, something that people just, you know, mainly women who fell into it because they, they wanted to, 
you know, they've got young babies and kids at home and they just wanted to get out and have some adult conversation and they hire a local village hall and they just start teaching keep fit etc and you know perhaps because that is the heritage that we've got um that the industry in terms of if you're looking at professionalism compared to other industries that we're probably lagging behind even though uh, you know we are a new industry what do you you know what are your thoughts about that in terms of has the has the industry become more professional Yes, I think there are the people who will make any profession professional, and there will be the people who will always find loopholes and get by or actually denigrate the code of ethics and the standards of any profession, whether it be plastic surgery, mm -hmm. dermatology, nursing, out of healthcare, we look at education, we look at those teachers who are certified in their states and areas and not, and same too with fitness. Are we more professional than we were is your question. I think we have more resources. I think we have more ability, but it is the rare professional, I think, who will aim to be both incomparably popular and professional. They are completely necessary and see, but they, do not come with each other. They must coexist to be untouchable in our industry. You can be a packed class that no one can even sub for on a mm -hmm. Monday morning at 9 a.m. and not have a certification to your name. Or, we know those people, mm -hmm. you could have every continuing education and NCCA approved certification in the industry and not be able to cue your way out of a paper bag. And we know those industry <laughs> professionals. Yeah. There is a huge importance to be both popular and professional, which is the crux of my book called Cream Rises, mm -hmm. on how to be untouchable in both. Are we more professional than we were years ago? Not everybody. We have more resources to be so. In fact, mm -hmm. I just did a survey at year end, and we're recording this at the beginning of mm -hmm. a year. And I found a horribly disalarming statistic of the people I surveyed dozens responded, if not hundreds, about keeping their certifications and continuing educations valid during our pandemic or letting them actually expire. I mm. was so disheartened. And then the next question is, are you still teaching as you were back before the pandemic mm. in different ways, but as, ma as many ways? And unfortunately, just everybody we take is not as professional as popular and vice versa. Mm, yeah I think it's just you, you get that anywhere don't you I mean I, I think of like you know parts of my backgrounds in martial arts and it's the same you know you've got the ones that um maybe it's just a human condition <laughs> I think sometimes it's just the human condition um, right I agree mm -hmm. I think you will always be gravitating towards and like moths to a flame we'll have those people who come to us because we're a little bit more than here's what to do with your bar class on Monday. And I love bar, minimal equipment, standing up, never get on the floor, mm -hmm. super simple, high repetition. All that stuff is great. I'm just a little bit different in what I offer uh, presenters. I offer those who come to want to learn how to fish, not just be fed a fish. So are you. Mm -hmm. You give education, not just do this one thing once and it's a one off and you make more money for one extra ball that you'll sell on a Monday. Mm -hmm. There, there are people like that. And unfortunately, because I'm in fitness and I do a lot of work in business of fitness and I do a lot of work on personal training, the business, our profession still judges your outside, still mm -hmm. says, well, unless you look hypertrophic and unless you look up specific mold for your demographic, you won't be taken seriously in what you do X, Y, Z. And unfortunately, we're still judging the outside of refrigerators. Yeah by the few value that comes really what's on the inside of your refrigerator mm -hmm. that makes the difference. However, I am living proof on camera with you that shows you don't have to be hypertrophic and huge and gorgeous and full of chiseled muscles to make it in the industry. <laughs> It is, but you know, it is, it's still around though, isn't it? And I, this whole thing of the industry and, you know, whether or not you get a job, a role, you know, is, is dependent on how you look or your age, you know, 
And, now your um, social media following and what else do you yeah. have and uh, I do what kind of mentality you have, what kind of drawing you can commit to to bring to an event with you, all those kind of things. Different, different mm -hmm. world. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember being told that I had to lose weight. Um, and then when I lost the weight, I was told I had to gain weight. Um, are you not getting a spray tan? <laughs> Just like, yeah, living for others and living those, those, like, no, I stay true to my Italian roots and I just stay, I just want to follow my own possibilities because give me gluten, love carbs, we'll follow them. I don't care what <laughs> I look like on camera because if people are coming to me for what I look like on camera, then they're coming to me for the wrong reasons. There yeah. are people and there are sources like that, I think, yeah. that those options exist. Mm -hmm. So what have you done over the years in this industry? What have you done for the love of group fitness that you're proud of? Oy, that word pride, and it's one of the seven deadly sins. So if I answer this <laughs> question, then I'm presupposing that I'm proud of anything that I have. If I go to my professional Facebook page, which I don't visit very often, but I post there, I have this wall or graphic or horizontal graphic beyond the round headshot, which is sort of my accolades at the top of my okay. fitness career. And I just not rest on those. If I'm proud of those, I think it's nice that the industry in some capacities in some countries and some cultures on some dates have thought that a non-traditional, gay, white, thin, non-hypertrophic male that some have called sissy, have honored with the highest group fitness awards or personal training awards or lifetime achievement awards of their organizations over the years. Not because everybody draws to my sessions at conventions. I'm not the one that packs them in because I don't teach the glutes and abs and whatever they're called. Not because I'm the most sponsored flown around the world athlete. And not because I think that my social media following has all accounts that are verified and millions of followers that listen to when I sneeze. I mm. think there's been some really nice times when I'm happy to say the industry hasn't gone with the cookie cutter mold and awarded me delegates choice and, and presenter choice by the committees that exist. Group fitness awards that say non-traditional can can sometimes be recognized. Look at Jennifer Coolidge on the mm -hmm. Golden Globe Awards, taking best prize for something. I love when the underdogs, the bully, yeah. the non-traditionals get a little bit of recognition. It so doesn't mm -hmm. happen very much at all. And that's what I'm happy about the industry has done for other hopefuls in the future who not mm -hmm. blend in, not because I'm quote unquote proud of those accomplishments. There may or may not be an award cabinet in one of the places where I live with all of those awards and dates and, and recognitions. Mm -hmm. And those awards might be super dusty because I would never dust them or pay anyone to dust them. True, because I think that would be like, ew, let them collect dust. However, I think that there's hope for the future. And I think that's important for people to know that you don't have to fit a mold in any career to, to do what you do. If you look at the people who are super important on your wall when you scroll, being different is great. You made this great post on your newsletter about being a giraffe of the longest mm -hmm. neck to stick out. And I think if you don't celebrate how you stand out, you're destined to blend in. And if they laugh at me because I'm different, that's okay. I've been laughing along because they're all the same. Mm. Have you had, I mean, you know, um, how did you cope? I think we all have highs and lows in our journey, in our career. You know, what, what kept you going when you hit, you know, any bumps in the road? My What's faith keeps me going. I have a faith, F-A-I-T-H, forward all issues to heaven. Whenever there is something over which I have no control, I say, I can't control this. If I'm happy about it, I'm grateful for this. I celebrate this and I forward all issues to heaven. F-A-I-T-H, there is something greater than I into mm. which I can put this issue's hands. And I think that's important. Into whose hands I can put this issue, I need to be able to turn things over. 
a step in the 12-step program. I need to be able to celebrate that I don't have to be the manager of the universe today. Every day I wake up and see, I ask myself after I meditate and caffeinate, and I've sort of moved around a little bit, do I feel today invisible or in, in invisible or invincible? invincible. And mm -hmm. based on the answers, I determine my prayer status and system mm. and project for moving forward. I have days when I feel invisible and I have days when I feel invincible and my mm. faith helps me in both. This great quote from the Bible, when I feel invisible, no one noticed my post, no one came to this event, no one gives a, anything that I have a new book. Or There are days when I have that and there are days when we feel absolutely invincible. Oh, there is hope. There is a drawing. There's somebody who made me a call and it's a great job offer. For example, when I feel invisible, no one sees me or no one hears me or no one's drawn to me. It's okay because this great Bible quote, I'm sure you know it, Ansi. I know you know it. It <laughs> says the reason that people don't see us is because they don't see him. And mm. therefore, I just feel so validated that it's okay if people aren't drawn to the light in me. They're different kind of moths, no better and no worse. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I just mm -hmm. have to celebrate my light and not let anybody take it out on those days when I still feel invisible. What gets me through, circling back to your question after two hours, I apologize, <laughs> my faith, because I have to know there's something greater than I that I believe has been my best friend and constant since, since, just growing up, the sisters of St. Joseph in eight years of Catholic school who shielded me from bullying and protected me when I was and did what was in their power back in the 70s, I have to say always instilled on me that it's okay to have a best friend and your best friend could be invisible and mm. invisible doesn't mean non-existent. Yeah. My Jesus is invisible to most, but it doesn't mean non-existent. And that's my best friend. My faith has carried me through so much of my life. I think that's such a valuable, you know, point because, you know, and you mentioned earlier on about not letting, you know, anything or anyone else dim your light. You know, it's kind of like what what can we, you know, what can the listeners, you know, what can we put in place to preserve that and protect that? The first is whatever your faith is, have something, whatever your F-A-I-T-H mm. stands for. I say forward all issues to heaven, I, mm. heaven to your heaven. I always say to myself, F-A-I-T-H, forward all issues to him, H-I-M, my three person God, if you will, mm -hmm. which is different for all people. The first thing is faith. And the second thing is this little trick I learned that is uh, became genuine when I first learned it to do it and make it a habit, which we know from your presenter, Cardi takes, I don't know, 90 days, whose research is always different. Mm -hmm. uh, different people say habit is different, different lengths of time. I say, just start it now. And when you're scrolling, if you remember that comparison is the thief of joy, and you remember that you see what great things people are posting on their highlight reels, instead of just posting and internalizing, why couldn't it be me? Or why isn't that my path? Or why isn't that my blank? Make a comment. How wonderful for you. I'm genuinely happy for you. This is what fitness means to me. I admire you. What a wonderful post. You inspire me. This inspires me. The more you do that and it comes from your heart, and see, the more I've learned that as candles, we light other people's candles. And my candle still stays a candle when I light other people. I've, I've said this on, on other mm. work I've collaborated before, and I remind myself of that. The little, the little hack or gimmick or trick is, is be a positive supporter on other people. You can scroll and forget it. And if you think you're forgetting it, Joe Dispenza, you're internalizing all of that comparative competitiveness. If you mm -hmm. reach out and make a positive comment, how nice for you that happened or good for you. Share me your mm -hmm. secret. It doesn't happen to me. Whatever it is, it's wonderful to be human and support the other people that you might be admiring from afar because everybody's admiring you. No one's admiring you or following or trolling you more than, than your haters or enemies yeah. Because, yeah, just because they don't comment. Trust me. So if you know your audience, make sure you publish to your audience. Mm. And I think it's it's this, you ha okay, so question for you. You know, in terms of remaining true, like for me, the sense I get from, from every time I've spoken, you know, spoken to you is that, you've you have a sense of who you are and 
you know, for a lot of people now going, you know, in the industry, there is this like, you know, they kind of almost lose themselves because they're trying to tick the boxes for different organizations or different roles that they're going to. Um, you know, when I've been involved in auditions for people wanting to become trainers and they they kind of go through a tick list and you're like, but I don't want you to tick the box. I want to see who you are and what you can bring to the team. You know, so have you always been that, you know, I guess comfortable in your own skin and this is me, this is who you get? That's a loaded question. The first question, have I always been this candid and honest and, and open mm. about who I am? No, because I, I had conventions tell me, if you play Christian music or wear your cross or do some of the things that you do allude to being gay, then that it's not appropriate for our event. So we would appreciate because we attract blah, 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 blah. And whatever part of the world we're in, I've heard it all. I had to, for work and job security, sort of teach the yoga pose as politically correct or cold or stone hard textbook as I could. And even that is open to interpretation. I have not always been all open and honest and who I am. It took a lot of years to realize that I'm not going to attract everybody. You can't be everything to anyone. We, you know, in fitness, we have these things called evaluations. When you think you're horrible because you have a fever, they love you. And when you think you were so perfect and gave everybody $5 Starbucks certificates at the end, they <laughs> rip your holes at the end with their evaluations and just cut you to pieces. You never can predict what people are going to say about you. So you stop caring. You have to know your worth and then add some tax. And let me say that again. It takes a long time to figure that out. You have to know your worth and then add some tax. Every mission needs a margin. No one works for free. And the worst professionals in the world of being money savvy and conscious, I think our, prof our fitness professionals, among them because we haven't been taught it's not dishing the industry mm -hmm. i'm still learning the beginning of every year i raise my rates how do you do that lawrence you pull up the coli the cost of living increase for your mm -hmm. city state and country your demographic i know what it is for puerto rico i know what it is for mykonos greece and i know what it is for new york city and uh, depending on where i'm offering my goods and services i take that average and i tell the people at the end of december when they don't want to hear about prices increase in the beginning of january but it's nevertheless important this is what's happening and you if milk bread and eggs which are establish the COLI everywhere are going up. Why would we consider that people are going to pay us the same if the standard of living goes up? My cable company just went up. My Netflix went up. My PayPal, mm. went up. you know that you're playing StreamYard, all this kind of stuff. And, and we're going to say, oh, no, but my value stays the same. Yes, but know your worth different from value and add some tax. That is so important in what we do. And then the second answer, I think, and see for the others is I tell myself as well, Take your work seriously. Take your profession seriously, but not yourself. Mm -hmm. So now, if I want to play a song that's openly Christian, not Jesus is the only way, because I have people from many faiths. I'm not going to choose something that's ridiculous. But if it comes from the Christian genre and somebody shazams it in a ballroom or on, on a Zoom and it comes up under the genre of Christian, I'm not hiding that. I am sharing my life. I will also share songs and disciplines from other faiths when I find them. It's a little bit harder than contemporary mm. Christian. There are plenty of songs with non-offensive but inclusive lyrics. I'm not hiding my my sexual orientation. I did not choose this. It's chosen for me from birth. And people say, when did you choose to be gay? When did you choose to be straight? We choose to be faithful to who we are. I think I think that's important. And I, mm. I don't hide anymore. I celebrate them. And to circle back to your original question, I've not always been thus. It took a lot of time getting through job opportunities at their terms, standing on yeah. their stages with their logos and their paychecks and their contractual rules, if you will, to be able to figure out where they have also learned along the way, some of them and some of the others. I learned this wonderful word that I say twice. It's called buy. And I say, bye-bye. And <laughs> when you say that, you learn to put something else in its place. And it's called Zoom, working for yourself. I love that. You love that, right? A hundred percent of what we do on Zoom, usually, mm. ourselves. Mm. No one's pimping us the way we've done in the industry for years. And there are advantages to that. Absolutely. I go around the world and I still do 
speaking and consulting and stuff like that. And there are advantages to travel and there are advantages to being your own, your own boss. You can't take yourself too seriously because that's when no one can relate. You have to mm. take your profession seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to my partner's really into music and um, he got his tickets for a live gig in April. Um, oh, what's his name? Darren Hayes. He used to be in Savage Garden. Right. And right. loved beautiful voice. And so we've just been listening and he was saying at the peak of their career, he was really rock bottom. And he had to film videos, music videos. There was one video he they felt spent a whole day filming and um, the record label or whoever it was went, no, we can't use it. You look too gay. And he had to reshoot it, had to straighten his hair. Like he, he says, like he says, I wish, you know, like now he's obviously he, it, it happened, you know, but uh, he says, I didn't back then. He says, I had no role models to lean into, you know, and to speak about certain things, etc. So I, he, you know, he just did whatever he was told to do, including look a certain way. Um, and, and thank you. Just... Sometimes you have to become your own role model until mm. you're sent the people along your path. I had nuns, mm. which nobody understands, mm. as original role models, and they taught me how to rhyme and sing and and pray and meditate mm. and dance for your own. And then I learned some more role models along the way. But not every time I asked for one did I get one. And mm. you have to choose wisely. We've all been burned, right? Uh, yeah. What a what a great story about your singer and the. Uh, when he was at his high height, he said he was at rock bottom. And that's the difference between our demo reel and our highlight reel and our real reel. Like it's called fake book often mm -hmm. because who puts, I'm having a really depressing day. Any tips? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to do that. Actually. I'm asking for tip. What do you have? What do you do when, but those are on my, yeah. my Instagram stories, which attract the least number of followers in the fitness. Yeah. My population is still on Facebook from my survey, right? How many of you are on Twitter and Twitter circles? What in fitness? My population is the over 60 around the world crowd where we absolutely have affinity to glow sticks, like a glow stick. We crack, <laughs> it, we take a little bit to start glowing. <laughs> Girl, no. I, can yeah. I can relate definitely <laughs> so facebook i'm not i gotta stay on yeah. facebook Fa you know the millennials the young drag queens that are very good friends with me they're always laughing at me because i'm talking about oh, it's a facebook post oh i have to record it horizontally because <laughs> oh you frozen i've lost you Hello. Hi, I'm back. Oh, you're back. I oh. never really left, like some people say in fitness <laughs> when you're at a convention. Well, you know, there was a two year pandemic. It was a little pause. Are you still recording? I'm still recording. I can edit this bit because um, that happened with Matt as well. So um, you went to horizontal video and obviously didn't like it. Um, but everything is it slowing down at the moment. Oh, I think it's settling now. Yeah. Are we OK? I can I can repeat a little bit what I was saying in case that helps you with an edit. Yeah, you're talking about horizontal. You 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 say it's on Facebook right. and it's a horizontal video. Yeah. I confirm that the majority of my friends and followers are on Facebook, and I get laughed at all the time by my friends who are in the drag profession, and they're all Insta everything. And I get it. They're 20 and 25 and 29 and maybe up to 33, 35. I'm joking, but they're always making their money and living and selling and doing so much on Instagram. So their world is, is a portrait mm. mode or, or, or vertical mode. And mine is mm. still, I love landscape on Facebook because I don't really love those two black bars that Facebook gives you when you post a vertically shot video. And I still love my, my, my friends and followers on Facebook. And there's a lot you can do in Facebook, like private groups, and it lives on forever and comments and go back and interact and download and save. And you can't do any of that with Instagram. We love Insta, but it's a different mm -hmm. purpose and population, I think. It is. I was listening to um, someone, they were talking about the future of the coaching industry as a whole and vertical videos vertical videos it seems the vertical videos are also in pinterest now on what like everywhere 
Pinterest. No, oh, Pinterest. No. I, don't I, 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 I saved refused. recipes. Oh my gosh. I, I just filled out, I just filled out my link tree because Yuri yeah. said you have to have a link tree. And so Yuri Rocket, I follow mm -hmm. and the millennials and they have this great bridge between TikTok mm -hmm. and Twitter and Instagram and Facebook because they came through the generations and whatever generations they are. And he said, you have to have a link tree. And I do. And you post your link tree and it's very, very versatile. And then the last thing it asks you is what's your Pinterest? And you're, you're not, you're 95% complete at your link tree profile because you don't have a Pinterest. I'm like, bite me because I'm not going <laughs> to do Pinterest. I do it. I save it for like branding ideas and I save recipes on that. <laughs> okay, great. But they're private. They're private ones. You know, they're not public. <laughs> well, instead of Pinterest, I just do something for myself. So I actually yeah. could say that I have a life a little bit every day. People say, how do you like your coffee? Alone. <laughs> oh, dear. So... Where do you see this industry going? The future of fitness questions have never been my favorite question because I just not propose to be a prophet. I'm happy to be on this journey now and I can say where we are now and I can see where we are growing. I can't say what's gonna happen in five years because look at all those people who predicted what happened and then there was the pandemic that shut down the whole world where's fitness moving. And then that pandemic didn't mean it was over and we went back to what those predictors said because we had a new, new outlook and mentality as we grew through. I think some people go through and some people grow through. I encourage us as we keep looking at what's happening in the world to grow through the wars, the change of century, the virtual, the hybrid. Where are we now and growing towards to try to answer a little bit your question? And see, I think we have to have a growth mentality. I think there's a huge divide among presenters who want to wake up and because their club is open, they go back to where things used to be maybe more distancing between their yoga mats, but people are in the classes taking and teaching and whether they needed to show their certifications were renewed during the last three years or not, they're back in that club and they don't wanna teach anything at another club. They don't wanna get more clients. They don't wanna get more classes. They want their gym membership and they really want status quo and they don't wanna have their class looked at. They don't wanna be better cures. They don't wanna be better technique. They don't wanna know what's, been controversial or removed from a warm up in the ACE and AFA and ACSM standards and guidelines over the years. And they're in their, their circle, not a spiral, they're in their circle mm. and bless their hearts. It works for them and pays the bills. Then there are the people who say, I grow and I open my mind and I want to make more money and I want to learn how to raise my rates and I want to do something on Zoom or what is hybrid. Maybe I want to start writing. If there's money in that, I want to learn what is on the convention circuit for me, just a growth mindset. And that's where I am. And that's the people I consult for and the companies I consult for. Mm. Uh, I can't work with the first. And then there are the people who just left the industry, right? Like everything during the pandemic, like it's not for me anymore. I'm now selling flowers. Yeah. Well, good for you. Mm, yeah. Um, so if you're talking about growth mindset, at the time of this interview, what are, what are you doing for yourself in terms of your own growth? As you know, I'm audio booking everything. I believe people say, how do you, how do you do your uh, time management tips, Lawrence? And you just have this whole course going on, on time management. I, always make my ears work if my hands are doing something. If I'm loading or unloading the dishwasher, planting, watering, fertilizing, playing with biscuit with the ball in the afternoon, my ears could be involved. They're either consulting, speaking, or listening. I'm audiobooking Atomic Habits like everyone. Mm -hmm. Joe Dispensa, which is a, not a casual listen, like mm -hmm. a biography would be because you sort of have to do the things along the way and process mm -hmm. the whole idea mm -hmm. of quantum, which is there's no time with time during time that you're playing a ball with a dog and, and making sure the dog brings back the ball. And 
I, I audio book for my self growth. I'm taking events that are online paid and not paid like your wonderful opportunity in December to start 2023 with a wonderful mindset. And I hope in show notes and podcast notes, people can get involved more in what they may have missed during your wonderful 30 minute off masterminders around the world in December, which is such a great way to set up 2023. Then I apply and I am on the committee and selection committee and programming committee and advisory committees for a couple organizations around the world that have in-person events, AFC in Asia. That keeps me on my toes because we get applications from first-time presenters. Who are they? And we get applications from return presenters. Who are they? Why are they, how are they do? How are they reinvented from last year or pre-pandemic? Then we get invitation, we get a lack of invitations from people who presented for us that we love who didn't reapply. <gasps> Did they hate our experience? So all of that goes on. And I'm back to doing some keynotes and public speaking and hosting. And yes, maybe at a couple events this year, 2023, some presenting, some sessions. Pretty non-traditional sessions. Are they Lawrence? Are they movement? Yeah. Are they lecture? Yeah. But let, let's call it a combination of those two kind mm -hmm. of things. I don't just want to have to decide of which and which. So keeping on my toes of what keeps me an industry subject matter expert is part of my learning process to answer yeah. you. Always listening to audiobooks, always listening to podcasts, which is making my ears move, consulting, being involved in mastermind communities, not that just pay me, but also into which I pay to keep me yes. on my toes and my heart in a growth mindset. And then continuing in the, in the environment of group fitness and personal training around the world for the in-person events is very much a, a, a love of mine this year because it's one thing to program an event and see mm. what it looks like on paper and then attend. It's fascinating. I think it's just, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? Because obviously, um, there's all the stuff that you're doing. What is it? What is it that you love about this industry that keeps you engaged? I love that I can work with continuing education professionals, PT, Group I... X, Group X managers, club owners, people with a directional sense. Because when you teach 80 people in a class, you get those 80 hearts. And how wonderful. It's it's great. And in many times, it's like a jacuzzi experience. It feels great at the time, and an hour later, you're off to the next thing. In group, in in personal, in, in presenting, as you know, Ansi, you're not dealing with eighty hearts. The eighty professionals that come to you go then to their populations. Yes, you are making what I love to say hashtag ripples. That's mm -hmm. what I love. Is that ego? I just love that if God gave me a message and I've learned something, and I've written a book about it. I don't want to share it with just 80 people who are consumers. I want to encourage them to be professionals and then share with 80 professionals who then are going to disseminate that information. And the mm -hmm. light lights others or the ripples spread to others or the sound goes through more galaxies. I just believe that you have to spread your message. Guarantee that you won't get everybody. And of those who come, not everybody will love. And there'll always be something to get and something to take away. It's sort of like cafeteria style bento box dim sum sampler <laughs> of Lawrence's wisdom. Sample this, come back for more if you want seconds, because daddy's got them. And, mm -hmm. and, and, I'll, and I'll see what you want. And then I'll work with those people who say, I need you on a private call. And those are the people that I love to work with because they've mm -hmm. still sifted through a lot of other stuff. The last thing I'm doing, NC, is to keep myself on the growth mindset is I took an invitation from the book I released in December 1st of 2022 to anyone who purchased last year, you get invited to at no charge, a mastermind group on the last yeah. Wednesday of every month of this year, where we're bringing to life my book on the untold business secrets of mm -hmm. fitness. And we're going from hashtag fictional to hashtag functional, talking about what happens in a fictional galaxy somewhere else and real practical business tips for today's professional. If you didn't buy my book in 2022, you buy my book in 2023 and pay to go mm -hmm. into the mastermind group. Mm -hmm. And that keeps me on a growth mindset because I have to say, what is this fictional story 
that maybe yeah. can relate to nothing about asking for a raise and getting a job and dealing with competitive, nasty people who sub for you and try to submarine you and uh, getting a job from something that was promised one thing, but they took all your money in parking than what you're really making. All those things that happen and making it very practical for today's professional. Because I've been there, I am still there. I still have many clients for nine months of the year in person, let alone my virtual clients and i can relate and if there's some things i can say to save people the headache i want to do that that's my growth mindset because it's a different mindset from the 80s mm. yeah and it's great you know the book is the book is fantastic like i was reading i'm going yeah 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 why wasn't that obvious to me um and there's loads of tips in there for you know people who are been in the industry for for a while especially for pe and and also for people who are brand new but if Thanks. you could give uh someone who's new in the in the industry who's listening in to this podcast um one key tip what would that be have a mentor have a mentor or two. Have a mentor or two. That's my short version. Can I expand? Yes. Always talk to somebody who, whom you admire. Why two mentors, Lawrence? It's great to have a mentor. And I'm not talking about role models. I'm talking about mentors. There's a huge difference. A mentor knows you exist and there is some energy exchange between them. I admire Jennifer Coolidge. I use her sound bites. She is a role model for me of some things. Uh, humility in an award speech. I love that. However, she can't be my mentor because she doesn't know I exist. Someone I compensate mm. or have an energy exchange with is a mentor. Have two. Someone who represents what you want to be in the industry, that means a fitness mentor, and someone who represents who you want to be as a child of God. And that person doesn't have to have anything to do with your profession, or even better, could read your evaluations and not know the in and outs mm. of in the inappropriate ballroom with Zumba going next door at 200 decibels, and you're teaching yeah. the restorative silent breathing, right? <laughs> When you have fresh eyes, I have two mentors, one in my industry that I compensate to tell me the hard growing nasty truth that helped me grow immediately. Not easy, but immediately and not easily, but immediately. And number two is someone outside of my industry, my best friend in Hollywood, California, who knows what it is to deal with the public and image, but knows nothing about the in and outs of fitness. But she teaches me what it is to strive to be colored with the fingerprints of God as a first class human being. And she knows she's my mentor. It's not like, oh, she's the best friend. And this is what I've learned mm -hmm. from Khan. No, she knows because she, she wrote the quote in my book and and acknowledge it and all that kind of stuff. You have to have two mentors and you go up to them and you say, I would like to work with mentoring with you if it's within my budget or some type of energy exchange. Can we talk about how to make that happen? Some people will say the first call is at no charge. Some people will say, just buy me a dinner and we talk about work over a really nice dinner. Some people will say my rate is $5,000 or $5 per hour. At least you just start that difficult conversation and you have a mentor. You can't assume that you're gonna figure out the secrets of the industry from a group fitness textbook on a certification test that you may or may not need where you live. Mm -hmm. You have to know the secrets from the people who know where the bones are buried so you don't walk over them. Yeah, because you you there was a post, isn't it? You did a post about this whole thing about calling someone a mentor. Yeah. I did. Thank you for watching and realizing there's mm -hmm. a difference between a role model, an icon, mm -hmm. and a mentor and uh, a client and a personal trainer, they're all different names. And I get people come up and buy books or uh, signings or after a session at a convention in person or, or in a chat room, which I'll open after a Zoom. Oh my gosh, you've been my mentor for so many years. Really? Where's the money? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I don't even know you, like how have I been your mentor? Maybe I've been a role model of some crazy yeah. thing I've said or done, maybe. But how could I have been your mentor? I don't even know what you do. What's your name? Where do you live? Mm. How old are you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So if you could sum up group fitness in one word, what would that word be? Love. Love. Okay. Yeah. My adage would be to play on the title of your whole podcast series for the love of group fitness, teach only love for that is what we are.
Mm. Whatever it is that you're going to teach, personal train, group fitness, coach, counsel, consult, write, mentor, Zumba, Pilates, stick, swords, rubber tubing, which I love, or kettlebells, or whatever it is that you're doing, whatever it is in your career that helps the world be a stronger, more loving, more flexible-minded and bodied place, teach only love, for that is what we are. And in that, my friends, you go around the world and will focus on the similarities not the differences, mm -hmm. like a tourist goes around the world and focuses on our differences. But a traveler goes around the world and focuses on the way we're all the same. That was my first book. And mm -hmm. I think it's important that we have the traveler approach to fitness. Focus on the way we are all the same. Oh, she teaches Pilates that way. She starts on the floor. She uses a mat. She uses a block. She was trained by this, but she says it's that way. Oh, no, it has to be that way. Well, Joe did this. Joe is dead, first of all. And then Joe wanted it this way, and that one wanted that. Listen, listen. I just think that we could focus on that we're laying on the floor with our legs in the air for most of the time, the way Pilates did, and we're all focusing on this discipline we might call Pilates, yoga, cardio combat, kickbox, whatever you do, teach with love and the money and the people will follow. You have such an amazing use of words. It's, it's just so inspiring. Seriously. It's a course in miracles. You know that. Abraham. <laughs> no. Not me. I'm just a channel. <laughs> Very good channel. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're so kind. Thank Very you. good channel. Thank uh, so thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Lawrence. Thank now, you for if asking. If somebody made it to the end of this with me, thank yeah. you. This crazy where boy. Can they, where can they find you? Find Lawrence? I have no Ooh. idea. At <laughs> find Lawrence on every single thing. Someone just asked me this morning, how do I find Lawrence on LinkedIn? I, I just answered back the question, find Lawrence. It's find Lawrence everywhere. If you type that into everything, except obviously, as we've learned in our time together, no Pinterest. I'll say no <laughs> Pinterest yet. When I give up my coffee time and actually have a life, then or no life, then I will, I guess, embrace Pinterest. I wrote a cookbook. I guess I should have a Pinterest to promote that <laughs> on all the things I've learned from all the cultures around the world where, where I've been privileged to be invited to. I, he I hear their good recipes. They're amazing Thank recipes, you. I hear. Thank Through the you. grapevine. <laughs> really? Thank you. You're very kind. Yes. My mom, who's the one who bought the book, she said, yeah, most of it is a mine. No, kidding. Um, there's one of my mom's recipes in that book. However, yeah, when we teach only love, then the love comes back. Not by everybody. And that's okay. Then we send them love and move on. Not everybody's going to be in our corner. And you're the reason for that. My friends, remember everything you do, whether it's dating or a job or an application or a class or a negative person after taking your class for years who comes up and turns on you. It's okay. Remember this saves my assets every single time I remember this. Leaving with a parting thought. You asked me for a parting quote. Teach only love. Parting thought is this. Saving me for 2023. Rejection is God's protection. <laughs> when it doesn't go the way you wanted, we have no idea that the way that maybe God is saving us from yes. a lot of headache drama lesson, you never know. Rejection can be God's protection. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. So find Lawrence, findlawrence.com. Genius. Yes, my website is find Lawrence. Right there will be a pop up if it's your first time visiting my page. See some photos of where we live with Biscuit and sign up for my newsletter because I always promise that every newsletter has some stuff that I will never post on social media, which is why I call it a VIP newsletter. If someone is an advanced opportunity, like getting into your online no charge convention in December of 2022 uh, early, then I post it in my VIP newsletter. It's free. You can subscribe subscribe in two seconds and unsubscribed in one second. It's super easy. Find Lawrence.com and you join my email list. Wonderful. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.